from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of The Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Seamus Hogan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution of our donors. The first is an anonymous donor from London, Ontario, for the intentions of her family. The Daily TV Mass Ministry is made possible by the generous contributions of all our donors and, in a special way, our monthly donors. This Mass is offered for all of those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer book, in our prayer intentions book, especially those who are facing significant transitions in their, in their activities, their health, their relationships, or their finances. Our thanks to all our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who prepared a fit dwelling place for the Holy Spirit in the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, graciously grant that through her intercession we may be a worthy temple of your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The descendants of the just shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. My heart rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. My heart rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord, my strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. My heart rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with spoil. 
the barren has born seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. My heart rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. My heart rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. Alleluia. Blessed is the Virgin Mary, who kept the word of God and pondered it in her heart. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. Every year the parents of Jesus went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when Jesus was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and the parents started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found Jesus in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. Jesus said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then Jesus went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to Joseph and Mary. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes in our admiration for holy men and women, we can create a caricature of holiness imagining that the saints are so otherworldly that they are only to be admired, not imitated. And this is especially a temptation, I think, when we consider the Holy Family. It's worth remembering that their role in salvation history, while absolutely unique and irreplaceable, was, for the most part, lived out in the ordinary realities of daily life in Nazareth and as we just heard, in their pilgrimage to the temple at Jerusalem. After their annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the Passover had concluded, the Holy Family headed home. They usually did this in two groups, and so as usual, one group made up exclusively of men went home and another of women. The children, for their part, could go with either party, which actually explains how it could come about 
that neither Mary nor Joseph noticed Jesus' absence until they reassembled in the evening. Each one assumed that Jesus was with the other one. Perhaps I think it is only a parent who is afraid they've lost their child who can really understand the pain that Mary and Joseph felt that day as they returned frantically to Jerusalem in search of their child. I think they show us what we ought to do if we ourselves lose Jesus through sin. If we discover we've lost Jesus through our own fault, well, I think we ought to search him out, to seek him, and rejoice in finding him through the sacrament of reconciliation. After three days of anxious searching, they discover the child Jesus sitting with the teachers and revealing an extraordinary knowledge of the sacred mysteries. Both Mary and Joseph were astonished, and Mary tells him that for three days they had been searching for him with great anxiety and disturbed as they searched him out for three days. You know, this is just one of the many challenges that they, the Holy Family, had to face. Years earlier, the Blessed Virgin Mary would conceive Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. And at that time, she was unwed. She's forced to give birth in a stable, in of all places, a cave where animals are housed and fed. And as if this were not enough, they spent years as refugees in Egypt, only returning to make their home in Nazareth when the mad King Herod had finally died. The Holy Family was not immune from the sufferings that many in our world face. Indeed, they knew real suffering. And yet, and yet, they were always faithful. Jesus himself is always faithful to the Father's plan. When his exhausted parents find him and ask for an explanation for the worry that he has caused them, Jesus asks, did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Although Joseph and Mary could not understand all of this, Mary, the scriptures tell us, treasured all these things in her heart. These few words reveal the beautiful heart of Mother Mary. It is a heart which is thoughtful, sensitive, deep, and loving. Hers is an immaculate heart prepared by God as a fit dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. And yet, as the elderly Simeon foresaw, her joy would actually be mingled with sorrow, as a sword would pierce her own heart, as she would have to witness the bloody crucifixion of her son Jesus. Her immaculate heart did not protect her from pain, only from sin. And when Jesus suffered death, she would suffer too, suffering with him because she loved him. Today, perhaps we can ask that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we too might have a heart to face the vicissitudes of life. We might have Mary's heart, always seeking Jesus out as she did, gazing upon him frequently, treasuring in our own hearts all that God has done for us in Christ Jesus. Let us bring our prayers and petitions before the God who knows and cares for each one of us that the Church may continue to call and send missionaries to preach the salvation of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that people who are confused or lacking self-respect may learn of God's plan for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our Prayer Intentions book, especially those who are facing significant transitions in their activities, health, relationships and finances, let us pray to the Lord. That the faithful departed may, by the heavenly assistance of our blessed Mother Mary, 
be welcomed by Christ in the glory of his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of years granted in our time to so many men and women in the second half of life. We thank you for their presence in our community, for their life experience, their courage and wisdom, their witness of faith. We ask your blessing upon them as they live the many transitions that are a part of maturing years. Be with them, keep them in your care, grant them peace, and enable them to become beacons of hope in our world. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, upon the prayers and offerings of your faithful, presented in commemoration of Blessed Mary, the Mother of God, that they may be pleasing to you and may confer on us your help and forgiveness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. And we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on this special venerable day of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, 
that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Thomas our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this act of spiritual communion? My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, that we who commemorate the mother of your Son may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television. And you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation. This wondrous gift, so far surpassing.